This vignette is intended to show you how to add properties in a workbook that was created from scratch. So you can see here we're starting the workbook by putting the equal EVDRE formula and then we're going to click on refresh workbook to generate the sample in the wizard so that we can create our workbook. Um, the request was to create stores down the side and be able to show their properties and specific sales accounts across the top. So you can see here it defaults to time and account so I'm going to remove accounts, add stores to my rows, then I'm going to remove time from the columns and I'm going to add the counts to my columns. Um, when I hit OK, this is going to generate the uh, template. And you'll notice that when it generates the template, it actually, I had selected self-independence. So rather than having individual stores, I have the states, which are the next level down from total stores. So if you notice, I'm going to open up the control panel on the EVDRE, and I'm going to change that self-independence to BAS from the drop-down box, which is base members. And when I expand after doing that, that's going to allow allow me to have um, stores down the side, the individual stores. So we saw this yesterday um, in our meeting, but now what you guys have asked to do is to add properties to that. So to add a so you can see here we're quickly going to move the uh, panel out of the way and we're going to add three columns in order to add our properties. We're going to add the customer property, the comp property, and the Florida Sunbelt property from the store performance report. So once we get our columns in place, we're going to hit equals EV Pro. We could have selected this from a list of functions. Um, and when we hit the function button after typing that, um, we will see the three fields that we need to populate. So it's like a wizard format. It's asking for the application, so we point to the cell with the application. Um, we're going to anchor that guy. And then we're going to point to the cell with the member, the store that we want the property for and anchor that because we'd like that to copy down or expand down and then we're going to type the name of the property in this case the first property is called cost so we do need to know the name of the property but if we don't do it correctly it'll just give us pound data or no data um, and then we're going to go ahead and copy that to the next column and change the property so we know the comp flag is status underscore comp and you can see that the C value comes up immediately for that first store and then we're going to copy it one more time and we're going to replace the value of the property with the um, FLSB, Florida Sunbelt property, which is FL underscore SB. So once I type that in, I should see a, a reflection of that property. And again, if I didn't get it right, it would just say no data or something like that. Um, and then rather than having to copy these formulas, these formulas are now part of the retrieval range. So when I hit to expand all, it's going to expand those formulas. It's aware that those formulas should be applied to every store in the range. So if you look here, we're just going to scroll down for a second and you can see, I'm going to put throw a title on top of these just to make it a little nicer so I remember that this is customer, this is comp, and then my last one is Florida Sunbelt. I don't know I don't know what exactly to call it, but we'll just keep that one in there. Um, and this will apply obviously to any property that we want to keep and maintain and we can show you how easy that is at, an, at another time. But um, but so once I've expanded these out a little bit, I'm going to scroll down and show you that basically for every store where I have a property, these properties are going to show up. And if I don't have a property, then it's just going to be blank. And that simply means that for whatever reason, we haven't maintained that property in the database. Uh, by way of explanation, we actually loaded these properties from a year and a half old store performance report. So the ones that are blank are simply because we didn't load the data in. Um, obviously, when we're sourcing that from your systems, you're going to have population for all of these stores, hopefully. Um, so there won't be any blanks. So you can see that with the expand all, it populated all the way to the bottom um, properties, and so I've got stores at the lowest level, and I've got my properties now displaying in the report. Our second objective was to go ahead and be able to filter by these properties, and the filtering is pretty simple in that you use Excel filtering. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to highlight the entire range um, of the uh, of the area that I want to filter, just like I would in a regular Excel workbook. So once I have that highlighted, I'm going to go ahead and hit my um, data tab, which is where filtering is, and I'm just going to put on my auto filter. So if you notice now, um, this goes by quickly, I filtered on non-comp, and here's non-comp. And I apologize, you could barely see that, but, um, but it went by quickly. Now I'm going to filter it on comp. I'm just hitting the auto filter, 
and now I see it filtered completely by comp so I only see my comp stores and I can go back again and filter it by blank and I think this time you can actually see it yeah so this time I filtered it on the blanks and it's retrieving all the blanks so the filtering is working and retrieving just as quickly um, as it would if you had the data directly in the Excel worksheet um, and it's behaving basically that way and I can also um, you know unload that filter filter on other things so our third objective is to actually um, our third objective I'm going to take off that filter is to actually uh, put in the sorts so with sorts um, I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to do it in Excel because the sort will disappear when I do an expand, but rather I'm going to do it in the control panel. So you can see here I'm sorting by column J. I'm going to sort ascending, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit the um, on the planning and consolidations tab, the expand all one more time. And when I do that, then it's actually going to sort ascending on column J, which is the FLSB column. So you can see my blanks are going to show up first. Then I should expect to see my FLs, which I do here and then I should expect to see my SBs at the bottom. And I can do that several different ways. I can sort ascending, I can sort descending, I can also put in a custom sort. So if I know what the values are, I can order the values any way I want. So with the um, customer dimension, I could order them any way I want. I can also add a second sort or a third sort based on how many columns I have. So I could, like here, I've done ascending on the um, comp, so I've got descending, Sunbelt, comp first, then non-comp. Then I'll have Florida, comp, and then non-comp. So I can sort um, in multiple columns as well. And all of this sorting that I've done here, and you can see here finally I have the blanks. Um, all of the sorting that I've done here is completely in tune with the database. So when I re-expand um, or refresh this template, none of that will disappear. Um, and then I think our last objective was to put subtotals. So I'm going to go ahead and keep these sorts on. And then I'm going to add subtotals. Now the interesting thing about subtotals is um, David Edwards, when we were there, showed you how to do a break total on a member. So when you want a subtotal by a property, it's a little bit more complex. It's not super hard, but it is a little more complex. So I'm going to ask it to do this um, total function up top. And I'm going to go ahead and point it um, I'm going to point it to the cells at which I want to, um, what I want to, where I want to put the total, and I'm going to put in a function called EV sum, um, and I'm going to put that across the columns that I want it to EV sum on. So I have to. This is like I said. This is a little more complicated. If you wanted subtotaling to be easier, the easiest way to do that would be to make the properties one of the alternate hierarchies. And I think we talked yesterday about. Um, you know what what the pros and cons of making them in the hierarchy or not but when I do that now I can go ahead and do what's called use an after range so after each time my value changes now I'm pointing to that EV um, that EV range up top where I've got my sum so I'm basically telling it after the change in each of the expansions to go ahead and give me a sum of all the data in the columns where I have data so that's essentially what I'm doing and then I'm going to apply that range to the entire range of the worksheet so that every time column J changes value I'm going to get a subtotal so you're going to see that here as I scroll down uh, actually once I have to highlight this range. Hang on one second here. There's the range. Um, so that's in my after range. And then now when I hit expand all, I should have a subtotal after each of the items in column J. So I should have an SB subtotal, and then an FL, and then a blank. Um, so there's my SB subtotal. There's my FL subtotal coming up. <laughs> There's a lot of FLs in here. And that's of course comp and non-comp. And then finally I'll have my blank total. And I believe I'll also have a grand total at the bottom. So you know essentially actually I don't I think I just have the blank total but essentially you know you can make the system do it on a property but you know it's a little tougher on the property so that would be something that you would want to set up ahead of time maybe not give to every user but a power user um, and then I believe we're gonna go keep going here to kinda do some formatting which we can do we can put bolds and and underlines and all that good stuff using Excel formatting but um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop here since we're at 10 minutes and, um, and I 
I think we've accomplished the objectives uh, that we set out to do.